Mark, you can start. My beloved, peace of the Lord Jesus. Tonight, the Lord has already visited our hearts through the praises in a powerful way. The Lord has already spoken through a, a few spiritual gifts, and we're going to meditate tonight on the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, verse 9. First Kings, chapter 19, verse 9. Let's wait until everybody finds. If we have projection, the brethren will be able to follow through the projection. Let's read a uh, spot on 9, and later on we are going to read verse 12. Thus says the word of our God, First Kings chapter 19, verse 9. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Verse 12. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, we are going through a moment in which the world, the circumstances, the pandemic, everything contributes for us to want to grow discouraged and give up and even use religious arguments not to do the will of the Lord. And this is a devilish strategy that is very strong. Because, see, my brethren, that in order for us not to have to tell the whole history behind those verses, we see that when Elijah he hears the threat of Jezebel, whom typifies evil, the devil, a threatened to do with him what she had already done with other prophets of the Lord. He simply got desperate and ran away. And the Bible says that he isolated himself. And later on, he lay down underneath a tree. And the Bible says he desired to die. That's why many times we cannot criticize one another. And even the heroes of faith, the, the men who are mentioned on the Word of God. See, my brethren, a man with the spiritual level of Elijah, with so many experiences, seeing the power and the action of God in a, such a such a direct, direct way, so close to him, he also had these moments of weaknesses. And this is something that we are not free from. There is no super servant of God. There is no one that is above situations that may cause us to grow sad. But the situation here is that there are few symbolic facts on this text. We are going to show a couple of them. First was the threat of Jezebel. Today we are also living a moment in which there is a threat, a world threat, placed before an organ of the government, another time placed before a world organism or regional or this, your own city, a state, there are threats, there are words that cause us to think everything is over, everything is finished, there is no way for me to do anything, not even for the church, for the brethren, or for the Lord. So then he lays down below a tree, and this tree specifically does not offer any prophetic meaning. It's just a common tree. So he lay down spiritually, speaking under human arguments, thinking that that was going to be his last day. 
but was not, because we don't have power over our own lives. Only God has power over, over your life. Even though he thought about himself that he wanted to die, God didn't harvest it, because God had other plans. God plans of blessing, plans of victory for the life of Elijah, in the same way that he has plans of victory to each one of us who are watching and following at this moment. Later on, Elijah runs away, but still, the Bible says that before running away, the angel prepared for him. The Lord sent an angel and put before him bread uh, uh, baked on coal and water. And the angel told him, eat and drink because you're going, you need strength. But then afterward, he slept. He slept. But after that, the Lord wakes him up and he goes to a cave. Even though he had participated on something so deep, he had entered into a situation where he, he would be in darkness, it would be an inhospitable place with lack of oxygen. And this can happen to you and I. Of course it can. It's not impossible. But the Lord is there to help us. And the Lord comes and he calls Elijah and he asks a prophetic, prophetic question to him. And it's, the same question is being made to us, you and I or you who follow us in this service. What are you doing here, Elijah? You may replace your name with the name Elijah. So then, as we have said, he was woken up and he was fed. And the Bible says that with the strength of that food, he walked for 40 days and 40 nights. Number 40, as we know, speaks prophetically of the number related to a trial. So we are going through a trial. There's no doubt about that, my brethren. We're going through a trial in our faith with regards to our finances, with regards to our health, with regard to our, our familial relationship. We're, we're going through a trial. But the most important is to know that God in no moment had abandoned Elijah in no moment he will forsake us. And the question of the Lord for us is the following. What are you doing here? You that may have connected with us tonight, you may be in a cave, spiritually speaking. Maybe you are in a, in a place of depression or discouragement or spiritual coldness and you think that everything is over. But the Lord tonight, He's going towards you and He's saying, He's asking, What are you doing here? What are you doing in this condition? Why, do ha why have you allowed this thought to enter into your mind, into your heart? And if the Lord knows very well our pain, He knows our difficulty, He knows our fragilities, He knows our tendencies, he comes to have a dialogue with us. The Holy Spirit is having a dialogue with you and I tonight. And this dialogue is a dialogue for a change. Today we can say that the Lord has a plan of change for the ones that by any chance may have laid down under the tree and may have used human arguments to, re to give up. They may have grown spiritually lazy. Even this moment when we are in the presence of the Lord, feeding from bread that comes from heaven, of water of life, many times you may get discouraged and go to a dormant state. And at the end, you end up entering into a cave where there are only signs of death. A cave is a place completely dark, a place where there is no pure oxygen, where there is a possibility of infirmity may come so that you may perish. But the Lord is calling us at this moment. He wants us to get out of this condition. And the question of the Lord is a question that is per pertinent to our instrumentality. We know that the Lord has, have, has taken us out of the darkness to the light with a purpose. The Lord has called us to this work with an important mission, to be a vessel, a blessing on His hands be a vessel of honor on his hands, to be an instrument of valor on the hands of the Lord. On the hands of the Lord, you and I, we have the potential, the spiritual potential, not one that comes from us. From us, we have nothing. We are not nothing. 
but in the Lord we can be a sword, two edges, we can be a powerful weapon because we're going to deal with people in our walk, in our lives, at work, on traffic, people that are going to need the blessing of the Lord is going to flow through from our lives. When the Lord asked that question to Elijah, Elijah came up with an argument and humanly speaking could be justifiable and plausible. Elijah tried to argue with the Lord and say, Lord, your prophets have been killed. I'm the only one left. And at that moment, he was being individualist. He thought that he was the last one. There was not going to be anyone else. And the Lord corrects him. Elijah, you are very mistaken because there is a group of people that is so great that have not bowed and are surrendered and are given up. And my brother and sister, you who are participating with us, know that you are part of this group of people of the 21st century that has not bowed down and has not given up, that has not left the presence of the Lord. You may be thinking that you're alone in an individual fight. It's not an individual fight, much in the contrary. It's a fight in the body. We who are here, even though we are not physically in touch, we are in, in, we're not in the temple, but you have no idea how the gates of hell shake when we access this link and when we see each other and we love, we look to one another on the screen and say, only the Lord is God. He's the one who gives us strength to enter, to participate, to greet one another, to pray and to hear the prayers of one another. And my brethren, when Elijah hears this expression, there are no arguments. The Lord as tells him, get out from there. I want to manifest my glory to you. <coughs> so he gets out and he sees the wonders of nature. He sees an earthquake, but the Lord was not in that earthquake. He saw the fire, and the Lord was not on that fire. He saw a strong wind that was strong enough to crack the rocks, but the Lord was not on the wind either. You know where the Lord was in the experience of Elijah? is on the end of verse 12 that we just read. A sweet and soft voice calm and tender voice. The things of the Holy Spirit, they are not boastrous. There is no need to an involvement. Maybe you think, oh, the church of my friend does this and that's, they do something else. My brethren, they are, we don't need to criticize them. We need to pray for one another because they used, maybe in a different way, but in in fact, the one who operates is the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit operates in a soft and delicate way. In my brethren, after the experience that Elijah had, he goes back and he does prowess in the name of the Lord, and he has the condition to experience from the Lord, even in the greatest miracles and greatest blessings than the ones he had experienced to up to that point. Now the Lord is asking to you and I tonight, Where, what are you doing in the cave? What are you doing thinking that only you are left? Only you are the servant? And why are you still alive? The questionings, the existential questioning, you don't need this need to ask this kind of question. You know why? Because you have been called by the Lord. You have been chosen by the Lord. In the same way as Elijah, by being someone that your name had been generated on eternity so that you may be an instrument on the hands of the Lord. Every service, in every service, the bread and the water are being served. The bread cooked on coal speak about the Holy Spirit. What, what, speak about Jesus when you, when you put a food over the action of fire that food is transformed bread baked on coal live coal speak about Jesus and the experience that he went through he speak about Jesus that was born grew up 
and brought gospel and healed and died, but on the third day he had resurrected in today's on the right hand side of the Father. And soon the Lord Jesus will return to take his church. See, my brethren, how interesting that on verse 4, on chapter 19, it says that he was he walked on uh, on a journey of a day. Journey of a day speaks of the life of a man, the way we think, our own nature, our structure, our own ideas. If we were to look to our own ideas, my brethren, we, we, we would not be here. We would be completely defeated because we we are imperfect. We have nothing to offer. <coughs> it was this song that we just sang. The Lord is everything for us. He's our ark. He's our shelter. He's our safe castle. With, through Him, we go, we're going to do prowess. See, King David, at the end of his kingdom, as a king, a powerful king, he also had the humbleness to say, I'm poor and needy, but the Lord takes care of me. The ones who heard David, David when he wrote this, they have spoken to one another. If they had intimacy with David, they may have even asked him, how can you say something like that? Since you are uh, such a powerful man, so rich, a man at the height of your success in your career. But he was referring to the human strength. Uh, out of himself, he had nothing. All the, his prowess, his kingdom, all the riches accumulated, precious stones, precious wood, the victories that his army has achieved, everything came from the Lord. And he knew that everything came from the Lord. So tonight, we're going to le get out of the cave. We're going to hear the voice of the Lord. We're going to look around us and we're going to observe the strong wind, the earthquake, but we are going to know of one thing. We're going to hear the voice of the Lord only on the wind, soft. And soft, the, the breeze that brings comfort to our hearts, to our souls. Maybe you connected here asking, what am I going to receive? What am I going to participate on at this moment? Know that you're participating on a living food. That is the bread baked on live coals is Jesus reveal, revealed in the crystal clear water that brings refreshing to your heart. Whatever you are, bow your head and allow the Holy Spirit to touch on your heart. You know that there is a group of people that is praying for you, praying with you and participating with you. My brethren, the church has been a body where the members help one another, where the blood cir circulates and we are nourished by the Holy Spirit and we can say only the Lord is God in our lives. We're going to praise the name of the Lord with another song at this moment. You pray in your heart. You say, by faith I'm leaving the cave. I, I heard you asking me what I'm doing here and I have nothing to do here in this cave. There's no business. I don't have business or covenant with the lack of oxygen. I have no business with this dark place, but I have a commitment with the living God that God that created heaven and earth is calling me with a soft and, and tender voice to return to his presence, to return to a condition of a bold servant of a vessel chosen by the hand of the Lord. May the Lord. <laughs>
going to have a word of glorification to the Lord this moment? Because on the days of Elijah, the Lord corrected him, saying, You're not alone. The 7,000 that didn't bow down before Baal, the 7,000 that are, are still standing, saying, Only the Lord is God. And you are part of this number. Number seven speaks about the perfection of God. 7,000 at the time of Elijah. Today, this number is much larger for the honor and glory of the name of the Lord because you're connected in a body where the Holy Spirit has acted, has nourished us, has sustained us, has preserved us. And this is a reason for great joy. I'm going to have word of adoration at this moment. Senhor, we glorify Exaltamos o teu nome, Senhor, por sua bendita salvação, ó Pai. Lord, we praise you for your great salvation because we have been grafted to your body where you are the head. Because through your spirit, you manifest in our midst and we give glory to you because you chose each one of us, Lord, to be here and today we'll be receiving this blessing because we are, do not bow down before Baal or this world, but we bow down before our God that took upon himself the, our sins, Lord. Glory to you, Lord, for this great salvation, Lord, because, because, it's because of you that we are here, Lord, receiving what you have prepared from the, etern from the eternity, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Receive, Lord, this prayer before our author in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord oh, Jesus, I'll hand the word for Pastor Sabado. I'm going to finish the service, therefore. I'd just like to share a speech, a speech or gift before. There's a man that has been walking at the reams of a volcano in a dangerous way. Although he is uh, in a situation of risk, he didn't hear the warnings to get out there. Maybe a person may be going through a difficult situation, a spiritual situation that is not discerned, that he's going through a difficult and dangerous situation. The Lord wants to give him deliverance at this moment. Amen. Amen. Let's finish glorifying the Lord. Eternal Father, we praise you. We're thankful because this moment of fellowship with you, because your voice is being heard at every moment in our midst, every instant. You have spoken to us, given instruction, and taught us, given us encouragement to continue according to your plan, your project. I want to praise you and thank you, Lord, because the resources are not being lacking in our from your part, glorified be your name, Lord, because every alert that comes from you, Lord, is a sign of your love or mercy towards our lives. Receive the service of praise and adoration to you that you offer in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the, people, the entire people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brethren. Service is over. I'd like to remind the brand to continue praying for Clady and her family members, for the mother of Isley in Brazil, that she caught COVID, coronavirus. She's being treated and is recovering, and Jacqueline as well, that has been submitted to a surgery yesterday, Jacqueline from Cassio, so that the Lord may continue to operate and restore the complete health of the, to these people, the servants of God. Uh, coming service is Monday, but every day through YouTube, the brethren should also be watching the transmission from Brazil at 7 o'clock uh, uh, on our time here. Amen. Peace of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace the Lord, peace the Lord to everyone. Pai Senhor para todos. Pai Senhor Jesus. 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 Pai
Pai do Senhor, Gabi. Pai do Senhor a todos. Pai do Senhor. Pai do Senhor. Pai do Senhor, Tia Malúcia. Tia Cris. Pai do Senhor, minha linda. Saudade, Gabi. Também. Saudade dessas crianças todas. Pai do Senhor, 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 Pai do